second part of our lesson today it's going to be about the emf equation so we're going to explain our emf equation of a single phase transformer so basically what happens is the magnetic flux step up in the core of a transformer when the alternative voltage is applied to it winding is also a alternating and is sinusoidal so let's our flux be the maximum value of the flux and f be the frequency of the supplier the time for one cycle of uh, the alternative flux is periodic t so you know that the period is given by one over the frequency so the flux rise sinusoidal from zero to its maximum at the quarter of the cycle what does that mean it means knowing that our sc source is a sinusoidal so if you can see that this is a wave okay so we have first quarter you see it's in four can you see so but already by one of the quarter because we have one two three four one quarter of the circle here yeah, one quarter one quarter one quarter it's already reaching what the maximum value that's why you see one quarter of the circle the times will be what one over two the circle therefore if you apply your period this will be the given period at that maximum value and then when is the average rate of the change okay so we know that's gonna be our flux divided by the time which is our period the rate of change we say is what the change in flux divided by the change in what in time and then our time is gonna be what the period so this is our change in time which is the period okay and then now from here you can see that when you apply you're gonna end up having this equation where the unit is wave per second but since waves per second is equal to one volt one wave per second is equal to one volt which means we can change this unit to volt can you see so we can say the average emf and emf induced emf or a emf induced is in each turn is given by that so as the flux vary from sinusoidal then the sinusoidal emf will be induced in each turn of both primary and the secondary so the sine wave form factor is given by the rms average value which is equal to 1.11 uh, uh, okay so you apply in order to get the rms value of this induced emf so it's going to be the form factor form factor is that one comma one which is equal to the rms average value it's going to be the form factor times the average value so we're going to take 1.11 times the average value what is our average value our average value is going to be that given equation therefore the induced rms value is going to be 1.1 times 4 times the flux times the frequency then this will be the induced emf in rms okay once you have it in rms now we can say that therefore the rms value of the induced emf in the primary will be given by that so you can see that we move from this equation but in this one we include the turn this is one turn but it's going to depend if the number of turn increase can you see that the voltage also we are going to increase so that's why we include that number of turn and the two equation will be the same for the two uh, uh both sides of the transformer the primary and the secondary but just need to consider the number of turn of the primary and the number of turn of the secondary but the flux is going to be the same for both okay and another thing we have to write down remember from electrical one when you are doing calculation you know that the flux is given by the flux density which is b times the area of uh, our ferromagnetic so that formula also you should write it down so the important formula to keep down on this part is only this three okay and then once we can have a look on the problem solving when we are dealing with our um, uh, induced emf equation for the transformer so they give us a 400 kva kva you know that this is a complex power s and s is given by what v times i can you see complex power v i okay you know that formula okay so uh, you can see that they say uh, four uh, four thousand four thousand this is what our v1 
and then 200 watts v2 okay and then they give us the frequency okay of a single phase transformer as a secondary turn which means we have our n2 okay and then they say determine the primary and the secondary current determine the number of the primary turn so we are, we are looking for i1 we are looking for i2 and we are looking for the n1 and as well the maximum flux for this uh, transformer okay so how do we approach this problem already we have discussed about how to use our kt ratio so from our kt ratio we know that this must be equal to that okay okay so which means from our transformer we know that s1 is going to be equal to v1 the rating of the transformer which means this total power is going to be equal to v1 times i1 or it's the same as v2 times uh, i2 so when you're looking for i1 you just take the rating of the transformer which is that power divided by v1 and then the primary current will be this the secondary current you said you take the same the rating is is that that rating is the same to the primary and as well to the secondary and then you can apply again that formula then you get your secondary current okay so when it comes to calculate the number of turn now we apply what our kt ratio here okay because we know the number of we know the voltage primary the secondary voltage we know the number of turn of the secondary therefore the only unknown will be the number of turn of the primary you can get the number of turn of the primary so when you come to apply our uh, induced emf formula which is our e2 already we have our e2 because since our transformer is considered to be ideal which means our v1 our v2 our v2 will be equal to e2 because the transformer is ideal so that's why we substitute here 250 a eh, 200 already when you substitute 200 here the number of turn of the secondary we got is 100 therefore we're gonna get our flux as that okay so let's prove that if you calculate the the flux using the induced emf on the primary is the flux gonna be the same yes if you apply the same formula now on the on the primary side what you realize that here you know it's e1 but it's going to be the same it's going to be equal to v1 because it's ideal and then we have the number of turn of the primary that we have calculated and therefore the two flux the flux in our free humanity is always going to be the same okay and then we're going to have a look on the problem four when it comes to problem four, they say a single phase, uh, 500 uh, 100 volt, which means we have our V1, and then you have your V2. They give us the frequency, and now they say the transformer has a maximum core flux. Okay, flux density, flux density. What is that? This is given as B. Okay, and an effective core cross section area. They give us what? They give us the area. And they asked us to determine what the, num the number of turn of what the primary and the secondary can you see that okay so as you can see here they give us the flux density and they give us the area which mean the first thing we are going to calculate we are going to calculate what our flux using the formula that i gave you once you have calculated the flux automatically you know that since the transformer is ideal our e1 will be equal to what v1 okay and therefore the only unknown here become what n1 because you know the flux in the ferromagnetic is going to be the same flux of because of the mutual induction and then you apply again the formula here you have your e2 e2 is going to be the same to what to v2 and therefore the only unknown here the flux is going to be the same for this for the two cases the only unknown become what n2 then you calculate your n2 so you you need to go through this problem solving on how to approach this problem so i'm gonna make this a video for you only so that you can watch this concept and then you can watch that concept as well so uh on the next video we're gonna discuss what next